Hello everyone, today we're on the public test server for Star Wars The Old Republic, and both the Bounty Hunter and the Sith Warrior have been made available for testing. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to test these on the test server. So you have two options. You can either create a level 1 character straight on the public test server, or you can transfer a character over. If you're transferring a character, you can do that on SOTOR.com and it's not an actual transfer, it's actually a copy of an existing character. So you could copy a Sith Warrior or you could copy a Bounty Hunter from your, your home server and copy it over to the test server. And you do that on SOTOR.com by logging into your account there. If you create a level 1 character, you can also boost them up to level 80. So once you've made a Sith Warrior or a bounty hunter, you'll run outside the starter area and you'll look for a little droid that looks like this. PTS Fleet Transport. It'll ask you, do you want to teleport to the fleet? And you'll say, absolutely, Mr. Droid, let's go. And it will uh, shove you onto the fleet. If you don't know how to download the public test server at all, it's a separate download from the main game. So another like 40 plus gigabytes of data but it gives you access to the newest testing stuff. You can learn how to do that on either Steam or through the SOTOR.com launcher. The instructions are different and I have a video link and guide about how to do that in the description of this video. So if you haven't even downloaded yet, go start there. So I've created my character. I've gotten her to the fleet. I'm gonna go up and take the elevator to the main part of the fleet. And I'm going to press M for map. I'm going to look for the combat training sections of the fleet. Uh, technically, the really new one that showed up this time is the Bounty Hunter. But the Bounty Hunter section is empty. <laughs> so we're going to head over to the Sith Inquisitor section. We're going to be looking for this little guy. His name is PTSCD-3 Combat Specializer Droid. If you need extra help, it's right here. We're going to talk to him and he's going to boost us up to level 80 automatically. There's going to be a bunch of spam that shows up. The other thing we need to do is kind of ignore the vendors here right now. There's an important thing to know and that's that the bonuses, the set bonuses gear and the tacticals technically exist on the test server, but they are not functioning. So we're going to go get some basic level 80 gear for this character in the supply section of the fleet. So you'll notice now my character is now wonderful level 80. There's some funky stuff going on with the character sheet. You just kind of kind of have to ignore it. So this level 80 gear that we're going to pick up is real real weird looking. So it obviously won't have any set bonuses because those aren't ready yet and I don't think you can get a tactical that actually works yet. Um, but more importantly, you can't mod your gear yet. So if you're looking to test exactly how it would look at level 80, you can't quite do that yet. But you can at least get some basic level 80 gear. And what you're looking for is right here in the supply section. You're looking for this Twi'lek, this blue Twi'lek called, she has a beautiful name. Her parents picked it for her special 318 Gear Vendor PTS. And here's the gear you can pick up. If you're transferring a character, instead of making a boosted level 80, so let's say you transfer over a 75 character, you would still go talk to that droid. Your gear is still not going to be level 80, so you can come pick up this stuff. I have no idea what to suggest. I just kind of bought a bunch of random stuff that looked vaguely DPS-y for my character because half of them didn't even have names. However, you can see all the stats if you want to be nitpicky about it please if you're the kind of player who likes that kind of stat stuff and understands it do it and get your right gear the best you can without it being moddable another very interesting thing that is fairly new i don't know if they're testing it out or, or what's going on you'll notice that my character doesn't have a helmet yet equipped because i just made her she's level she started off level one when i buy a helmet instead of it going into my inventory it's automatically going on to my character and that will happen for my earpiece here. I'll be able to have it happen for my, my relics and everything else. But if I happen to go buy a chess piece, that's going to go in my inventory and I need to equip it. So if you see something funky happening, like you feel, oh my God, I'm buying stuff and it's not going in my inventory. What's this garbage? Something new, something new they're testing out. Looks like I have to go grab her some 
lightsabers and it looks like she is missing some implants too so and a belt and some other stuff and you can just fill up your character however you need so here's some important stuff to know now that you figured out how to actually set up your character she's level 80 she's got her gear that she needs what do you go do now so first off there is some new changes to game scaling on the planets game scaling i don't know how it compares to level sync yet but it's kind of equivalent it looks like so like if you go to drone cost you'll be scaled down to level 16 in some way Reminder, game scaling is not available for old operations, ops outside of 7.0, or veteran and master mode flashpoints. So if you want to go test this character and the new game scaling, make sure to go do it on an actual planet. One thing that I noticed is that in general, the enemies on planets seem slightly harder. I mostly did testing on Droman Koss, and I got my butt whooped when I tried to go into a heroic without a without a companion, even with my 318 gear. So that's a really good sign. I'm not really sure where it will be once the dust settles after testing, but there's a good chance um, lower level enemies may be harder, even if you're on a higher level character compared to the current game. I'd love to see more testing and numbers about that for anyone interested in that. Uh, there is some bugs going on. So first off, if you make a bounty hunter, you'll have hilarious yoga pants and I hope you enjoy those. Second is companions are not auto healing the player. This is a known bug. There's no amplifiers for the PTS right now. Um, your mounts may be missing. Travel to a new area and they'll reappear. I assume that's if you transfer a character. Set bonuses are not enabled. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that's still not finished on the UI as well. You'll notice like when you press K to open your abilities menu, which is the main thing you're gonna wanna go check out apart from actually testing combat, you'll notice big work in progress sign. This is not the finished way it's going to look. However, um, on the bounty hunter I noticed especially and the juggernaut especially, some of the tooltips are broken right now and you can't actually read them. The developers have said that they are aware of this and hopefully we'll get more information about that soon. Um, but you should be able to test in the meantime. I think the tooltips are just not properly showing up if that helps any. I hope that taught you how to go test stuff. You don't, you won't have a ship, which may be frustrating, but don't forget you can. Where's my mini map? <laughs> Who knows? Hang on. On your mini map, click the icon of three little people. And you can go to the solo tab and you can travel to any of these planets very quickly that way. There's a teleporter to Ondron near where you boosted your character up. And you can also start in the chapters. If you start chapter one, you should be granted your ship as well. So go test. I'm going to have a ton of links in the description of this video that can show you where to give feedback or other resources related to the test server. And I hope you're able to give some good feedback to the devs. See you guys later.